Hey guys, Mike here. In this video, I'm going to show you how I formed, poured, and finished this concrete ramp for a wheelchair. But before I get started, I just wanted to say this video is being brought to you by the Concrete Underground. That's my private training academy to teach you how to pour and finish concrete just like we do. The link to check that out is down in the description below. So what I'm doing right now is I'm tap conning on my forms to the sides of this this wheelchair ramp now this wheelchair ramp is 28 feet long so it slopes 28 inches in those 28 feet it's an inch slope per foot which is right at our wheelchair code here in the state of maine so i'm going to get my forms all tap con tap conned on first and secured and then I can finish up with the rest of the prep on this. I'm using two and a half inch Tapcon screws. You know, I'm drilling into the concrete and then screwing those screws right in there. And those things hold really, really tight. What they also do is they also help make it easier to remove the forms when we're done. So as you'll see, we're gonna rub, sponge rub all the faces of these when we get done horn and we get into the finishing process <clears throat> but I was all by myself here today forming this up which does pose a few little um, a few little problems when you're trying to hold a board up on the side of a, a concrete wall like that but I got it all figured out now we're putting styrofoam in this just because that's what the general contractor wanted us to do and Typically what styrofoam does is it helps insulate the gravel underneath it. This is an exterior structure so it'll never get frost underneath it and lift it. And now I'm going to tie a mat, a number four rebar in here. About, they wanted it about every two feet on center for reinforcement. So they, uh, The contractor I'm working for got all the rebar cut for me. So all I had to do was just place it in there and tie it in place. The ramp here is going to average around four to five inches thick and they you know they put a nice frost wall under it too so that'll help protect it from the frost moving this thing up and down and all so what what I'm showing you here is you know we also did a stairs and entryway along with this ramp but Luke and Darren are in the back and they're pouring the concrete up the ramp and it just kind of shows you that we kept the concrete at a pretty, pretty stiff slump so it'll hold its shape as we screed it, bull float it, and get it smoothed out. So they're in the back, they're getting that poured out. And this is what it looks like from this angle. You can see the concrete's pretty stiff. We don't want it to run. We always screed uphill when we do a ramp like this. We just feel we feel like the concrete stays in place a little bit better when we're screeding it uphill versus downhill. What makes it easy is they can both screed it from the outside using the top of the forms that I got set right to grade. We're just going to keep filling that under the straight edge until we get it all screeded all the way to the top of that that landing up there what we don't want is we don't want a bunch of waves in this and dips and humps so that's why we kept the concrete pretty dry now I'm gonna go really slow with the bow float because I don't want to create any sagging with the bow float either so just slowly up and slowly down just to help fill in the aggregate. And you're bound to get some holes in the aggregate there as you pour a slump that stiff. So I'll go up and back two or three times and get it all filled in really nice. And then we'll, we'll finish it off just by mag floating the surface out to get it nice and smooth. So that's what I'm doing now. I got done bull floating. Now I'm going to take my mag and just run it over the surface and fill in anything that I didn't get with the bull float because I don't want to create any humps or dips with the bull float so that's just what makes it a little easier. 
So now here we are. We're about an hour after the pour. Concrete set up enough. It's not too wet, so we can start cutting in our edges with our with our little edgers, and then we can start mag floating out the surface for the first time. Just to smoothen things out a bit more. You can see I'm cutting out just a tiny little hump right there and filling in a low spot. And I just want to make sure I get that stuff all done before the concrete sets up too much. So that's why we go over it initially before we get the finish on it is just to smooth things out. Now you can see I'm checking another spot and I just want to make sure there's no waves in that thing because if you're going to be going up and down this in a wheelchair you know you're going to want a nice steady somewhat level surface as you're going down it in a wheelchair. So there we'll just fill that back in. I'll take that little bit of excess concrete and just get rid of it, throw it to the side. That's pretty common when you do a ramp is to have a, a small tiny amount of waves like that. So it's pretty easy just to take them out with a, with a straight board like that. So after we mag float the surface out and get it all nice and smoothed out and bring up the paste then the bruminant's the next step. You know, we want a pretty decent texture on this because we definitely don't want it to be slippery. This ramp will be exposed to the elements like the snow and the freezing rain and sleet in the winter. So we want a good broom texture on it. Baron's going to work his way up the ramp. He'll do two or three passes and then he'll take that broom and he'll clean it off in that bucket of water he's got right there behind him. Shake off any excess paste that gets stuck to the bristles and then he'll just keep going until he finishes that up. Now we're not cutting any grooves in this by hand because the general contractor didn't want any hand cut grooves. So we're going to saw cut some contraction joints in this the next day. That way when someone's going up and down it in a wheelchair, they don't feel the bumps from the hand grooves as they're going up and down it. With a saw cut, you're not going to feel any type of joint at all in something that's uh, like a wheelchair or even a, a walker, a push, you know, a push walker that has wheels on it. You won't feel that with saw cut grooves. They'll end up bringing up the grade on the outside of this quite a bit. I'll show you at the end of the video. But they're going to bring this gravel grade up quite a bit. And then they're going to pave all this this area, this front area. Brand, so it looks like brand new when we're done. If you guys like this kind of stuff, please go ahead down here and smash that like button. That'll really help my videos rank better in YouTube so more people will get to see them. And if you're new to the channel, you know my channel's all about concrete work. So if you like that kind of stuff, go ahead down there and hit subscribe now. So Luke's coming behind Darren now and he's going to just put a finished edger mark on it just to make the edges look a little bit more finished. This is really optional. You could just leave it broomed like Darren has it right now. Or you could do the finished edge look like this. It's just, it's all in preference. Doesn't matter what you like. So now what I'm doing, the next day I come back, I'm snapping my chalk lines for my sawed contraction joints. You see the concrete's already started to cure out a little bit white. I'm putting these about every five feet apart roughly. So that saw goes down about an inch and a quarter to an inch and a half. And that's going to control any type of 
shrinkage cracks that may want to develop later on down the road. That's a soft cut saw there. That works pretty easy for a saw and contraction joints. Then I'll just, I'll get rid of the dust, you know, real quick with my little DeWalt blower there, battery operated blower. Get everything cleaned off. And then we're going to let this sit for a few days, then we're going to come back and seal it. So this is what we're doing. We're sealing it. I got one of those Tomahawk gas powered uh, sprayers there. That's a really cool sprayer. And I'm sealing it with radon seals, last to seal, penetrating concrete sealer. So that'll penetrate down into the concrete. It won't leave a slippery film on it. And it'll protect it against freeze and thaw. And then I'm going to show you a finish. This is a few months later, so they got the handrails on and uh, they got the driveway all paved. It snowed this morning, but this is what it looks like. Thanks for watching.